Welcome to Dr. Amazon Podcast, the emergency support channel for FBA private label sellers. We invite top Amazon experts to share the most efficient tips and tricks for your businesses. We are trying to deliver only accurate, credible, and relevant information. My name is Vitaly Fizhniak and I am the CGO of Profit Vale. And let's get started. In today's episode, I'm happy to have Nin from Ping Pong uh, as our guest expert. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you and thank you for having me. Of course, it is a pleasure. Today, uh, we will talk about selling internationally on Amazon because I think it could be something on the radar for many sellers that we have now. It is a huge opportunity to generate more revenue and to grow the customer base. But there are also many pitfalls to be a fair of before expanding globally. And Nin will clear up for us, Amazon sellers, the most important things. So sure. uh, thank you, Nin, just for joining us today. Uh, I would be glad if you will just start uh, with introducing yourself. Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Ning. I work for Pingpon. Um, I'm the head of business development and uh, global partnerships for Pingpon. Um, pro, uh, I've joined Pingpon one and a half years ago, uh, 2018, September. Actually, tomorrow is going to be my two years anniversary at Pingpon. And prior to joining Pingpon, I spent majority of my career in the e-commerce industry, uh, started with Amazon. Um, so I joined Amazon in 2014 um, in their third party marketplace business um, in London office and worked there uh, across different roles. I did merchant recruitment um, and also uh, some special programs, for example, launching uh, UK's first prime day, um, that was a pretty exciting um, opportunity and experience, unique experience as well. And then I internally transferred with Amazon from our London office to New York office and started working on the advertising side of the business. You know, um, at that time we were still um, separated as AMS and AMG, but right now I've Everything is lumped together um, into Amazon advertising. So that's what I did um, at that time. Um, and then after Amazon, I joined a US manufacturing company called uh, New World Brands. Um, and we are a house of brands. We own a lot of uh, very famous American brands, for example, Sharpie, Almas Glue, Coleman, um, and I was doing e-commerce brand portfolio management for several brands um, during my time at Newell. And then after that, um, I decided to join Ping Pong, um, you know, to just same, um, still helping with cross-border e-commerce, but from uh, more from like a payment and compliance uh, perspective. Great. Uh, thank you for this story. Uh, as for me, it's, it's really cool that you have an experience inside the e-commerce, then in advertising, and now in payment system. So you just go, you know, around all the cycles that we have inside the Amazon. So that is a really cool. And according to that, uh, my first question uh, will be this one. Uh, how to seamlessly enter new marketplaces? Yeah. And uh, what are the challenges of selling internationally? Um, I think... Uh, selling internationally um, is a huge opportunity and also with COVID, I'm also seeing a lot more sellers trying to um, mitigate the risk of being overly concentrated in one marketplace. Um, so that's definitely a very uh, good trend uh, to capture. Um, but there, like you said, there are a lot of challenges um, that comes with it. Um, I think, first of all, from the compliance uh, point of view, you know, especially if when we're talking about uh, European marketplaces, VAT is the question that's not going to be avoided. You know, like you have to set up your VAT register, uh, register uh, your tax um, uh, tax numbers with all the local author authorities. And after that, you have to make sure that you pay them, you are doing the calculation correctly. Uh, so that's the first thing compliance wise and the other one is payments which is you know happen to be uh, what we are specialized in um, mm -hmm. because you're dealing with cross-border um, dealing with different currencies and a lot of the hidden cost could be there um, for you to potentially save if you're using the right um, services 
Um, so when it comes to payments, so say if you are a US uh, seller and you're selling to um, Amazon.co.uk, um, the sales currency that you receive from Amazon is going to be in GBP. However, you're probably uh, paying a lot of your staff in USD. And on top of that, you probably also have a lot of suppliers in different countries, for example, in China, in Vietnam. So that means you need to have a pretty put together multi-currency management system so that you can avoid all of those unnecessary hidden costs. So payments um, optimization is definitely going to be one of the challenges as well. And apart from those two, I would say, um, language could be um, a challenge if you are selling to other U European countries, um, which is not UK. Um, so you have to make sure that your titles, your keywords, everything uh, with your um, Amazon listing is optimized uh, due to the local um, user habit. Um, and also uh, product selection. Uh, what works well in the US may not be something that you can sell um, in Europe. So I think mm -hmm. those uh, could all be the challenges from my uh, opinion. Got it. Fair enough. Uh, but uh, if we will come back and go like, uh, we will dive deeper into the cross payments yeah, that we have. How correctly to work with it? How correctly to manage it? Yeah. Um, what is the right solutions uh, when you have like these situations? Yeah, so the typical problem when it comes to cross-border payments is really um, how to um, avoid unnecessary hidden cost, right? So the hidden cost include transaction fees uh, via tra traditional banks um, and also the FX fees. When you're trying to convert um, from GBP to um, USD through your traditional banking, they will charge you a lot in terms of the FX cost on top of a pretty high uh, transaction fees as well. So I think the way to optimize it is to really have a um, unified system, a unified portal to manage all of your uh, payings and payouts. By paying, I mean um, all your sales proceeds from Amazon in different currencies. And by payouts, I mean um, when you have vendors, you have to pay in, a, in another country, in another currency or um, your um, employees in a different country. So let me go into um, a bit more details in that. So let's talk about paying first. Um, let's just take the example of US sellers selling to different countries in yeah. Europe. So the currency that you receive primarily probably is uh, are going to be in GBP and EUR, right? And the traditional way, what a seller would do is to use its USD bank account to filling in the seller central of the uh, UK or other EU countries seller central. What Amazon then will do is to transact all of those GBP and EUR into USD and send through wires to uh, the seller's USD bank account. And the savings potential in that process is huge because Amazon is taking the FX fees and it's charging the transaction fees. Um, to uh, the seller. So with a ping pong solution, what we do is we allow the sellers to open a ping pong account. It's a multi-currency ping pong account. What that means is when the seller is receiving money from UK, from other EU um, locales, we allow them to open a local bank account with ping pong in the system. Um, and they can actually apply and get those accounts immediately in like a few seconds. And they can fill a GBP bank account and EUR bank account in those respective um, seller central. And then what Amazon would do is to send GBP and EUR to the uh, ping pong bank account. And from there, the seller can have the flexibility to either uh, transact uh, all the currencies back into USD and withdraw to its bank, or maybe the rate is not super satisfying and the seller can um, just wait for a few days until he sees a rate that's more in, in favor of himself and then he can make the transact. So, so that's um, on the pay inside. Um, mm -hmm. 
Oops, sorry, I was cutting you off. No, no, everything's okay. No, go ahead. Okay, yeah, so that's just on the paying side. And now let's also talk about the payouts. So after receiving money to Pingpong account, um, there are a few things the seller can do uh, with all of those multi-currencies. The seller may have a um, local advertisers he needs to pay in local currencies. And through our system, um, the seller can just pay in the same currency, which is to avoid um, the FX exchange. So comparing that to the traditional way, it's so much better. It saves the seller so much money because in the traditional way, um, the seller receives G, uh, USD from Amazon and then he needs to go to his bank and do the FX exchange from USD to GBP so that he can pay for local VAT, for local uh, vendors. And with our solution, the seller never have to do it. If if the seller knows he has some local vendors, local VAT, he needs to pay. He can just leave the GBP in the account and using our system to directly pay those vendors in the same currency. So he never has to suffer from any FX losses or any transaction fees when it comes to cross border. So that's another benefit of using our system to optimize the money flow. Um, and the sellers can pay not only its local suppliers, but also global one. Uh, we have a pretty advanced FX uh, currency converter embedded in uh, every seller's ping pong portal. And the seller can just transact on our favorable rate, definitely much better than traditional banking. Um, he can use that to transact the um, currency that they receive from Amazon into whatever currency he needs to pay their uh, pay, pay globally, whatever uh, currency, you know, like uh, CNY, uh, like the, the Chinese currency or um, USD or um, UR, um, we support uh, more than 10 currencies in our system, um, which governs uh, e-commerce sellers basic needs when they need to pay uh, globally. So I would mm -hmm. say that's the uh, that's the most optimized solution for a seller. So um, as I understand it correctly, with, with the help of your like service that you have, uh, the Amazon sellers will have a chance to be more flexible in the case of the international uh, payments or trans trans transactions. Yeah, uh, they will have a chance to uh, avoid uh, some height payments from like banks that they could have like a commissions or something like that and the uh third point is like due transparency yeah that if you will need uh, to convert uh some current uh, some currency to another one yeah it will be easier for you to do and to pay for your local vendors for example uh is it correct right yeah, definitely. And also on top of that, I would also add, it gives a lot of the flexibility back to the uh, seller. Um, now they don't have to transact immediately when they, uh, or like being forced to transact on the currency that they receive from Amazon. They can simply um, just wait until they feel comfortable with the rate in our system. Mm -hmm. And then that's when they transact. It gives a lot of them, uh, it gives them uh, a lot of the freedom back mm -hmm. Um, yeah. in terms of controlling their um, FX, controlling their uh, financial transactions. Yeah, that, that is great that you provide Amazon sellers with some place to play, you know, and just yeah. the way they write uh, rates that they would like to get. Uh, what is the period of this like waiting time? Um, can you cl please clarify yeah, I mean that, what do you mean by uh, the waiting uh, time? Yeah, I mean that uh, if I will get a money inside of my account, uh, when could I, for example, sell it? Yeah, uh, based on the rate that I would like. It, uh, I don't have any due dates or something like that. No, not at all. So in our system, um, the rate will be refreshed every um, 60 seconds. So whenever the seller feels comfortable with the rate at the moment, he can transact immediately. 
got it got it okay thank you for the clarification uh okay uh if we will come back in the case of like the vat yeah uh what is the main difficulties that you have faced yeah and uh maybe a one two or three recommendations about how to work with it correctly yeah, um, definitely. So uh, the first challenge I think a lot of sellers are facing when it comes to VAT is that they have to go through the long process of registering the uh, VAT. And it's not only like one VAT fits for all of the EU locales, right? Uh, you have to separately register for UK, for um, Germany, for France. So that's obviously a process that takes um, a lot of investment and a lot of a lot of time from the seller. So that's the first uh, step. And then the second step is when it comes to payments, it also requires a lot of optimization. Um, I don't want to repeat the, you know, um, what I have just mentioned, the changing, uh, exchanging currency back and forth. I think that's um, well explained as well uh, already. So Another challenge when paying VAT is you have to make sure that your VAT payment arrives with those local authorities um, or like the local third party vendors on time, because um, if your payment is somehow delayed in that process, then you're probably going to be fined or you're probably going to have a bad record with the local authorities. So um, we also offer, um, at Ping Pong, we also offer a VAT payment service to all of the sellers. We allow them to pay in local currency that they receive from each uh, locale, which avoids the high um, FX transaction fees. And the other one is we offer uh, trackable payments, like through our sales representatives and through our customer service people, a seller can always track through us where is my payment now and how much longer it's going to take until it arrives with the local authorities. It provides a lot of um, certainties in terms of the payments for the sellers as well. Got it. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, here's like the, the, the question in the case of your competitors, yeah, because you are not the one player in this market. Uh, what is the main difference between like the ping pong, like the PayPal that we know, the PNR, uh, could you please clarify it too? Um, that's a good question. Um, I get that a lot. So I think the first, um, first advantage, which is the very obvious one, is the um, local bank account capability that we offer is just much better than anyone else in the market. So uh, we offer to support all the Amazon locales in terms of the local bank account uh, capability, aside from Brazil and Saudi Arabia at the moment. Um, but for those countries, nobody can provide a local uh, uh, bank account capability yet. And we're actively working on it. Um, but aside from those two, uh, two countries, we offer local bank account to absolutely um, every other locales. So from the FX savings perspective, we are the best on the market. Um, and through that capability, we're also offering a lot of business growth potential to the sellers. So um, just to go into a bit more details of that, if you're a seller, US seller, now you're thinking about maybe only expanding to UK, um, which is the uh, bank account capability that a lot of competitors would offer because that's relatively easy. However, maybe six months later, um, you heard about this amazing growth opportunity at Amazon.UAE um, in its uh, UAE marketplace. Then you want to expand to that marketplace as well. Um, what you need is a local AED bank account. And we are the only provider on the market that offers that capability. So if you're using our competitor service, then what you have to do, if you don't want to lose a lot of money, is to um, open another uh, account with Ping Pong while using a competitor service. It's not going to be the most optimized when it comes to your financial management. So if you work with us, 
then we offer you all kinds of uh, local bank account capabilities. You only have to do business with us. You manage all of your e-commerce sales in one portal, which offers you a lot more flexibility in terms of FX in term, and also a lot of convenience in your financial management. So that's the first advantage that we have. And secondly, uh, product-wise, we're always um, very up to date with all kinds of seller's needs. A good example of that is um, in the e-commerce industry, you obviously have a lot of SMBs, but those companies will grow. You are you probably started from a two people um, operation and then growing into a 10 people, 20 people company, like relatively like a medium or large size company pretty quickly because um, e-commerce industry grows very fast. That's the nature of the industry. So then you started to have a finance team, a marketing team, an operations team, a sales team. And all of those teams probably need to have access to your um, Amazon uh, sales um, information. However, maybe finance, finance team would only have the authorities to, uh, authorizations to move the money, to receive payments and also to pay out. So in to cater into that kind of needs, we have a uh, multi-access permission management system. So if you open a Pinpoint account for your entire company, um, we can allow different teams to have different permission in managing the account. Um, we would have the payment authorization to, for the finance team. We would have the viewing permission for the sales team so that they can, you know, Keep, um, keep an eye on how much sales that they're bringing in from different marketplaces. So um, it, it just provides a lot of uh, convenience for the company's operations. So I, that's just an example of one of many product innovations that we're rolling out on a monthly basis. Um, so the product um, innovation is one of our biggest advantages um, against our competitors. We're just closer to the customers. We talk to them on a daily basis and we're always listening in to what they need and we're developing um, our products to cater their needs pretty fast. Yeah, thank you so much. It's it's absolutely like wow for me that you have a so cool uh, transparency for different teams, you know, because it's really helped uh, a lot of sellers to 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 like grow faster yeah when you have a uh, different teams that need to be updated in the case of some payments that you just have done or just waiting to get that is absolutely clear for me and that, that is really cool think of that yeah. you are working so close with the, all the amazon needs yeah that we have and that we right now working on every time that is really amazing so uh Nin, uh, I guess the last question uh, for you is the, could you please provide me with the right contact information uh, or the right way to contact you? Yeah, if uh, any of our um, audience will have a chance to just ask you any questions. Yeah, definitely. Um, anyone can just feel free to uh, email me at uh, yening um, at pingpongx.com. I will give you all my contact information. And my phone number is 99-842-8880. So uh, feel free to call me if you have any questions um, on payments, our solutions, or maybe broadly on you know the e-commerce industry. Um, if even if you are struggling with your e-commerce business, if you got any questions on that, feel free to um, message me. Um, if I don't know the answer, I'll be sure to connect you with the right person. Uh, thank you so much, Nia. Thank you for this amazing podcast and sharing all this information with us. So uh, hoping to see you in person soon. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you for having me again. And that is all for today's Dr. Amazon episode. Don't miss our future arrivals with a new hot topics. Press the like, leave us a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. We will come back to you shortly.